everyone, Steve here with another edition of That Geek Guy. In our last episode, we talked about hacking Commodore 128 and other Commodore computers. Uh, in that particular episode, we were talking about hardware hacks. Jiffy DOS, uh, the Servant, which was a menu-based screen that you could save some of the run commands, and so forth. In this edition, we're going to discuss hardware hacks a little more. Just now I was playing one of my favorite games from the 80s. It was called Aztec Challenge. And this particular game that I was playing was a software hack. It's, uh, it's an attempt that as kids we used to bypass some of the uh, opening software and things that would copy protect it. And uh, we can make our own copies on floppy disks similar to this one. But in this episode I am going to demonstrate what I discussed in our last show. And that is what I call the ultimate Commodore computer hack. And in this case, today, I'm going to demonstrate that. As we talked about earlier, we're working with the Commodore 128 computer here. We have a 1571 floppy drive. We have this hooked up to a modern day television set, in this case a flat screen LCD, high definition TV. Uh, you saw that we demonstrated playing games and so forth on it before, so I'm doing this in real time so you know that I'm not uh, taking it away and swapping in a computer here. You saw all the hookups and everything. Uh, just for a little idea here, we have some special characters. Uh, but what's so special about this hack is that with a keystroke, it now becomes a PC. We are actually running Microsoft Windows 7, a fully functional operating system uh, for today's computing power on an old 1980s Commodore 128 computer. Floppy disks? No more. It's a hard drive built into here. I've replaced the drive lock switch with a power button here for easy access. As you can see on the screen here, it, it's Windows. I can minimize things. I could, uh, I could look at pictures. I can surf the web. I can, uh, I can do my homework on it. I can run uh, the, the whole Microsoft Office suite. Okay, on the back of the system you can see that it's a regular desktop computer. It's not like I took a laptop computer with all its tiny motherboard and, and tiny hard drives on other parts in it and, and squeeze it into this case. No, what you have here is a fully functional desktop PC. Uh, I'm connected here with a US or excuse me with a DVI connector. It does have an HDI connector here, and I even have high def audio with an optical out. I'm currently hooked up with an audio cable because of this particular monitor. I, I think it gets a little bit sharper picture with the DVI, and then I can pump the audio into the onboard speakers. But in all reality, I can eliminate both of these, plug in a single HDMI connector down here, and have it squeeze out the audio and the picture in full high def. This thing will actually produce uh, 1080i and 1080p. Uh, now, an even better step to that is I can do a dual monitor configuration and I can plug in both the DVI and the HDMI simultaneously go into two different screens so I can lay out my stock reports or, or my landscape pictures or you know the Grand Canyon or anything like that and, and still have full functionality on it. It's awesome. Uh, these connectors right here, these brass uh, threaded points here are wireless end connectors. So there's actually antennas that can, that can thread onto here, but this thing is so powerful that it's picking up my router upstairs uh, even without the antennas connected. So that's how good it is. Uh, speaking of networking, we do have the, the, a standard uh, uh, RJ45 connector here for, for hard wire connection as well. If you see here, I have my keyboard. Uh, it has an emulator board built into it, and I'll talk more about that in another episode when we, when we open this baby up. But I have a, a regular USB connector here, which you can see is plugged into the back of the, of the computer. Uh, I have an old school mouse here. I went with this sort of faded, yellowing kind of uh, old white uh, Microsoft mouse, mouse to go with the amber looking case and, and the old, uh, old style because it all just it seems like it's made to go together. But if I wanted to, I can, I can, I can plug in a wireless uh, dongle there and, and have a free mouse. Speaking of wireless, one of the best features on this thing is Bluetooth. 
In all theory, I can get rid of this, 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 and this, plug in a single HDMI, and I can go completely wireless. And that's all I would have would be the one connector on it. Uh, we have uh, additional USB 2 connectors right here. And uh, as of the moment, it is still state-of-the-art. It has the newest USB 3 connectors on here as well. Uh, obviously, you know, we got the mic inputs and, and other auxiliary connectors on there. Uh, one last thing to look at here is we do have a PS2 connector, so we can go old school and we can hook up a, an old style keyboard to it if we wanted to make it uh, look like something else. But this whole particular uh, package here is, is keeping with the whole Commodore look. Uh, I could do a PS2 mouse or, or any other device that I need that. Uh, lastly on here, just to tell you about this processing power that this thing has, is these are actually water jackets. This thing has a liquid cooled uh, processor on it. Uh, so if I wanted to overclock this baby, I could. And I could keep it cool. Right now, it, it's running very cool. And I have a nice large fan on the inside that, that stays quiet. Now if you look, if I demonstrate, if I kick off the lights, and as you can see, when I dim the lights, uh, you can see that I have a, a glowing light inside from the fan, uh, which gives kind of an eerie blue light out the back of the case as well. Uh, just a little added touch that I thought was pretty cool. This is my hack. I appreciate you joining us, and I hope you stay tuned for another episode of That Geek Guy. Thank you.